Hi everyone. Welcome to the sixth episode of Lockdown Conversations with me, Kunmeet Sahib. Today I've got someone who I've really admired for his writing and intellect. He's spoken about the right topics when it really mattered. His articles are on First Post, Array, and tons of other websites. Uh, very thoughtful articles. You should definitely check them out. He started his career in advertising, then moved on to become the head writer for AIP, where he's written and directed some really amazing content. And currently, the co-founder of All Things Small. Please welcome Devaya. Welcome to the show, Devaya. Hey, how are you? Thank you uh, so much uh, for that nice intro, uh, <laughs> for making me sound <laughs> way better than the most things. I think that intro, the content on that intro is better than some of the best content I've made. Like <laughs> you just, you just took me out really well. No, no. I think uh, hats off to you with uh, all you've done in your career and where you are right now. I think it's a dream for any creative guy. I must say, uh, the I'm, I'm, you... I'm right now in a cramped up house in Bombay, uh, where if I try to change my T-shirt <laughs> while keeping my arms out stretched, <laughs> I will hit. Okay. So in terms of courage, I don't know. Uh, if this is where people should be, <laughs> and, uh, so you know where you like in Bangalore, you started from the bottom, but still there was space to hit the ceiling. But in Bombay, I got here where uh, you know you just stay in these small houses, cooped up. Um, this is a pandemic. Uh, people are was like you know that like I was just like thinking the other day that um, even in Bombay, yeah. even if you're locked yeah. up in your house, you're still not six feet away from your neighbor. Yeah, yeah, I heard so, that. <laughs> you can't maintain social distancing even if you're in your own house. <laughs> so yeah, man, I'm I'm divided on uh, the place I am, and yeah. if it is uh, if yeah. it is an enviable position to be in or not. But thanks anyway for having me. But, so but tell me one thing, uh, I mean, compared to uh, both the cities, Bangalore versus Bombay, uh, how's the scene in advertising? Because you worked like a uh, few years in advertising uh, there as, as yeah. well, right? So how's the scene different? Yeah. Is, it, is it like really different from, from Bangalore? I mean, uh, look, talent wise, there is no difference. All right? okay. So I somehow, I mean, I moved to Bombay in 2013. And I was uh, in advertising in Bangalore from 2008 to 2013. So I was there for about five years. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I had this uh, misconception that like, you know, something magical that happens out yeah. here. Or, yeah. you know, there's some force of nature because every NCD, you know, is based out of Bombay. Every head office is in Bombay. So I thought it's just like some place where just geniuses thrive. Right. Uh, but I just realized that... Uh, it is not talent at all. Like it's the same. In fact, in so many ways, I think Bangalore is way ahead mm -hmm. in terms of uh, thought, in terms of talent, in terms of creative people. At least, They're like you know, some of the best creative people I've met in my advertising years has been from Bangalore. Right. Um, but the only thing that is different in Bombay is the drive. All right, because right. Uh, you have uh, like, like I told you, we live in houses like this. And there are uh, just everyone comes here to sort of make it. And everyone is in this giant factory trying to sort of stand apart. And uh, basically, even if you want to just stand in Bombay, you will, you will be running. Yeah. So there is no yeah. there is no stop to your force. So what happens essentially is that you just push yourself way more than you would in Bangalore. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I even now haven't been able to make up my mind if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm. So in terms of talent, there is no difference. In terms of creating work, there is no difference. But in terms of drive, uh, that's what I think Bombay brings to the table. So maybe that uh, pushes you to such an extent that you push yourself as well. Mm. Um, and you inherently try and outdo yourself. Uh, but as a creative person, I'm not sure if in the long term that is good. Will there be greater burnout? Yeah. You become part of the yeah. factory. There is no place for organic thinking, which like Bangalore is way more relaxed and at least in 2013 would mm. allow you to sort of um, be more chill with your work and your state of mind is more relaxed. Mm. So obviously the thoughts are 
are different in Bangalore. So uh, as a creative person, I'm divided uh, about the longevity of Bombay. Mm. Uh, but mm. the only thing that is different in Bombay is that time. But everything else is the same. No, absolutely. I think even uh, the whole perspective of that, the clients uh, that earlier that Bangalore only had your southern clients like Prestige and all of these guys. But yeah. now I think it's moved on to where, uh, you know, uh, you have your pan-India brands like Swiggy. Uh, and everybody's uh, headquarters is here, even the agencies are here. So it, it's it, that way, I think even the you get to work on the best of the brands as well, the new age brands. Yeah, true. So I, that's that's one of the reasons why I actually I moved to Bombay in 2013. Like, you know, the startup bubble was, you know, that startup phase was just mm. exploding. Mm. And, uh, but it hadn't like sort of come through yet. And uh, say, if you're an Ogilvy, you are working on, let's like, say, an Alan Solly, you are working on a Titan. You're working on, like, say, like uh, 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 an alcohol brand, hmm. um, an and you're brand. working on, uh, you're working on an IT brand, or you're yeah. working on a FMCG, which is either an ITC or a Britannia. And now these are these five brands that used to exist in 2013, and uh. these are the five other brands or the big companies. And then every agency had a variation of of, of a brand, like you know, uh, right. like ITC would split its creative between right. between Ogilvy and Ulka. Then your uh, uh, USL group would split between like a JWT, uh, a Mudra, and and someone else, a Rediffusion. Yeah. So essentially, you are in the same circle, sort of just moving like uh, from one brand to the other. Right. Uh, right. So, so yeah, that 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 was how it was, and that's why I felt like okay, maybe there's a break that's needed, so the city would offer me those things. Right. But like you rightly pointed out, right now I think it's all like it's it's all leveled up because mm-hmm. Bangalore is where probably the most exciting brands are right now. Like you mm-hmm. have Flipkart, you have Swiggy, you have you have like tons. So you have everything that is kind of like popping right now they first pop in bangalore and then even in terms of your pubs right like even in terms of your eateries like social first came to bangalore and oh yeah social e3. Right? monkey bar oh, first yeah. came to bangalore yeah monkey bar first came to bangalore then you see monkey bar all over the country so uh so it's become a great sampling city and also that makes it very exciting for uh, young brands and young brands come with young brand manager with more with with, with the visionary founders who are willing to take more risk as opposed to a brand that is very well set uh, where you know it's just like one bureaucratic uh, it's basically like an Indian bureaucracy there where even if you have to just write like a different line it has to go through some six levels yeah so, so yeah, yeah. Bangalore right now is, is really good yeah the food scene I have a, a strong opinion that Bangalore is much much better uh, compared to Bombay so uh, because totally. I mean, I, I, I completely agree. Yeah. Like Bombay, uh, Bombay is, uh, like I'm yet to go to places that give me good biryani. So there is no good biryani. No good biryani place. Uh, no good so biryani. for me, that's like a, no, no good biryani place yeah. in Bombay. Uh, no good coffee place in Bombay. Uh, so <laughs> that way, food wise, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Cool, man. Uh, so, uh, Divya, uh, uh, you know, initial years you spent in advertising, right? So, I mean, uh, initial years in the sense, a good seven years, seven to eight years you were in advertising. Uh, so, how did you make that shift uh, to a, uh, you know, like a very different um, content creation agency? Like how AIB had just started its content arm and then how did you make that yeah. move and how did that happen? So uh, essentially, what had happened was I've been an advert. So Bangalore. So there were there were many things happening at that time. So right. I was there for till 2013 in Bangalore, and I loved it. I loved that. every minute I spent in advertising in Bangalore. I just absolutely loved. Mm. Maybe mainly because mm. with the people I work, like I had like uh, yeah. some phenomenal bosses uh, who basically I followed in Bangalore. Like there was the pool uh, who used to head, uh, you know, who was a senior CEO of the then moved to Madras. He was heading Madras. So I just like. Uh, work with a very great bunch of people mm-hmm. and uh, so mm-hmm. I it uh, so I never f- there was no fatigue or there was no boredom in in my career right uh, but when I moved to Bombay I, I think I uh, made a very wrong move in terms of agency mm-hmm. uh, where mm-hmm. I uh, sort of came into this uh, uh, I mean agency very independent whatever <laughs> new age agency here and I just didn't uh, I didn't it didn't work for me at all okay. um, and then I uh, and then I just started questioning a lot of things uh, like digital was just um, you know at its seams it was just about to burst right and um, 
Uh, in fact, it had already popped, but you know, no brand was doing anything exciting on digital. It was uh, mostly social was media, still, right? So uh, I think social media. Yeah, it was. It yeah, it was very very bad. It mm-hmm. was just like trashy, and uh, agencies were still after this PVC, and like you know, uh, uh, you know, those were still like your Olympic medals that yeah. everyone wanted, um, and. I started getting very bored. Uh, mainly, I mean, it didn't help that they were. I mean, I didn't find a good set of people to work in Bombay. Okay. Uh, that was when I was in advertising, so that bored me out. And even the work I was doing was like I was find it very repetitive. Right. Um, and so these things were happening, and then I was seeing a shift in uh, uh, on, on on Facebook. Like I was seeing how powerful Facebook was becoming, mm. and uh, it had already become actually. But okay. I was just seeing how rewarding it was getting uh, if you did something well on social or on YouTube. Mm. And uh, when the AIB mm. opportunity came along, um, uh, it was a no-brainer, to be very honest. Okay. Uh, I mean, I was at that point, I was at low, uh, low Lintas, Bombay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, had, uh, uh, I had moved to low Bombay, and uh, which was a very nice place, actually. There were some nice people over there. Okay. But it was just that I was not... I was not feeling it with the work, and then um, AIB uh, was just wanting to grow, so they wanted to just okay. start like a little writing team. I think, uh, yeah. So that way, I think it was it was great. So I just moved uh, in 2015. Yeah. 2015. Oh wow. So uh, in terms of content creation agency, there weren't too many of them present at that point of time as well, right? Filter copy was just starting off. PBF. Uh, I don't know if uh, the presence wasn't too much. So obviously, it was a huge risk for you to move from advertising uh, to uh, this side, where I mean, a lot of brands weren't in readily investing at that point of time as well. Yeah, it, so it, it was actually because so also I put seven years into advertising, mm-hmm. and now you're almost in that uh, you know in that like place where if you play your cards right, you can mm-hmm. become like a like you know you just go yeah. into that mid management or slightly upper middle management. Right. So you know. It, you are you are there because you put in all that hard work and you put in those years yeah. and uh, uh, all those yeah. things. But to be honest, I was so bored that you know it didn't. It just didn't matter. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> I was so bored, and okay. I mean, I, I I just look at every most of the times when I make decisions, like you know, when I have to take an important life decision, um, I just have one filter in general, which I is my abiding principle. It's like I never want to make a boring mistake. Okay. Uh, so, like, even say I was in engineering, I did my engineering, I was like, I should have taken up an engineering job, like, get gotten placed, all those things. But then I was like, you know, chuck it, like, you know, let me try something else. So, I, I essentially, I never want to make a boring mistake, and this perfectly fit that way. Like, even if everything got screwed up, mm-hmm. like, it would have been that I screwed it up in a very nice way, like, it would have been a good screw up. So, I didn't even think about, uh, to be very honest, I didn't think about the risks at all. Okay. Like I was just like, okay, this is exciting. Let me just get out of this ship that is uh, that is not so happening for me, right. and let me just move. And uh, then when I moved, uh, yeah, there was hardly any branded content happening. Yeah, and in fact, uh, yeah, we we just like started getting briefs, and then uh, I think our first branded video came in late 2015. Uh, which is uh, for truly madly with this called the Creep Kavali, and that really blew up. It yeah, yeah. like trending on YouTube, and it just did very well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and after that, even uh, you know, many brands started putting uh, their uh, money into like uh, uh, into branded content, but they didn't place not put the big money into branded content, and mm-hmm. that is precisely why most mm-hmm. of the content creators got greater independence. Yeah, right. Because it would be like, Array, we are doing our TVC, let's just put like 3% of our budget here, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. You know, it's at least, uh, we are ticking this box when we give interviews to PFAC saying that, hey, we do digital work. So, <laughs> uh, so brands approached, uh, approached uh, you know, content creators and brand content with that lens and that really helped because you got a lot of freedom. They right. weren't that anal with you as they would be with an agency. Um, right. So, so, so then things started really picking up, and I right. mean, now it's just the other thing is just shifted to a crazy level, right? In like content right. stream, right? Um, so, and uh, I remember because even I kind of had uh, 
sort of wanted to see whether there was a servicing division. So I had contacted Vignesh at that point of time and asked him if there's okay. no. And uh, Vignesh had mentioned, no, Macha, uh, we are the ones who do the servicing as well. Uh, that's what the yeah. guys do the servicing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was a, a shock because you have clearly divided functions, right? So it was obviously yeah. a very different function. So how was that for you? I mean, was that like a very different environment because you had to speak to the clients and, and everything like on a day-to-day -day basis? I, mean, uh, I, in fact, preferred it this way, you know, uh, okay. because also in advertising, at least back then, the I felt personally that the quality of client servicing had fallen to such a, uh, you know, low that it would most often be a hindrance, you know, because uh, it would, it would, there was no passion on that side of the table is what I felt most mm. of the times. Mm. So uh, it was, it, it was most often a hindrance. So here what happened is one, AIB was never a funded company. Uh, right. There was no big money in the background. So we were not like, yeah, we were bootstrapped to mm. hire like, because there was money. So. Um, essentially what would happen is uh, you just did four things at the same time and uh, speaking to clients was one of them and uh, getting brief from them was one of them just presenting your work also was part of the whole gig mm. and uh, in fact it worked out very well uh, mm. because there was no communication lost there was uh, there was very little scope for leak mm. uh, and no better person to sell work than the person creating the work because mm. that is where the passion comes in and the client feels and knows where this person is coming from. So I think it helped a lot. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. And uh, was the creative process very different from how it typically is in advertising for you? So was it like, obviously, uh, completely, completely. Yeah. Mm. Okay. fully different like uh, it took me a good eight months to unlearn everything i learned in advertising oh, okay. uh, uh, yeah to sort of start delivering or contributing or making a, an active difference in uh, uh, in the contents here because uh, the, the thought process is different how you think is different mm -hmm. um, you know uh, mm -hmm. you are thinking of making things go viral so you're thinking of um, why people share, you're thinking of how to make them share, you're thinking of playing on their emotions. You are really being persuasive on the internet so that someone presses that share button, mm. right? So, and mm. at the same time, you have to maintain a certain amount of quality in terms of content because yes. so, the thing is when you are a content creator, your first client is your followers. Um, mm. Then comes the next client, whoever you are making content for. Because mm. if you make content that pleases your second client, like a brand, and you upload it and your followers hate it, you will get trashed in the comments. And that will uh, that is more detrimental to your business and the client's business, right? So mm. so you so you, your whole thought process changes, your uh, yeah. how you approach yeah. work changes, how you write changes, your discipline changes. Um, because I mean let's face it like you know in advertising in conventional advertising you are selling to the client okay mm. so you are if the client mm. buys it mm. then i mean that's what the whole game is i, I don't know yes. if you are selling to the person buying the product right you are not going and your your feedback loop stops the client so um, and and then what happens if the work doesn't work Mm. Uh, you have mm. hundred reasons to tell yourself why it didn't work. You can like you can like say creative blames the media. Creative, creative blames the yeah, media. Anything. Somebody. I mean, we, we can blame Somebody. anyone. We can blame supply chain, saying that array the product didn't reach people. Array the huh. product was bad. Huh. Uh, there was uh, there, the media spends were not happening. Right. Like it wasn't last. Uh, so uh, the client messed up. So mm. there is a hundred. Uh, what do you say? Different ways where you can deflect blame. Right. Uh, but whereas in content man, you just get butchered in the comment section, right? So mm. there is no way, like if say the top comment is like this content is shit, it's not funny, you wasted five minutes of my time and 1000 people go like that comment. There is no way on earth at night you can convince yourself that uh, you did a good job, but it was too smart for the audience or there was some other thing at play which affected the work. There is no, you can't, you can't justify the comment section, right? So, um, so for me, uh, you know, when 
and when when you're going into work from that uh, uh, you know lens mm-hmm. uh, i think everything just changes mm-hmm. so yeah interesting man because I, I i'm sure a lot of them in fact uh, work towards the awards or something right so that's that's primarily the goal uh, in advertising uh, for a lot of creative uh, guys a lot of lot of creative agencies as well uh, so i think uh, that's probably the benchmark but here it's a different benchmark because it's your real audience which is actually uh, seeing yeah. it and commenting it in the uh, yeah. that's true because see i think uh, uh, i mean i there's nothing i can do with a can mm. if i'm getting 10000 views like i there is there is no way another content creator would hire me like right. if i went to interview at tv yeah. for filter copy and they are like okay show me your work and then everything is 3000 views but i say hey look this idea is so radical it just forget the views but look i want a can for it it they will i will not get a job Like, no one's going to respect me. So, uh, like awards is like the last. I don't even think we thought of awards. I mean, we won a few, uh, but I don't think we ever thought of work from an awards point of view. And right. I have no grudges mm. against people who do, mm. because it's the game you. It's it's the game that you decide. It's it's which game you decide you want to play, right? right. Like, um, you want to play a sure creative right. game. what is the barometer there what is the yardstick it is the award so you want to be at a global level in terms of your creativity mm-hmm. there is no way you're going to win uh, those you can be on the global level and um, sort of compare yourself to someone in a in in in, in say droga 5 mm-hmm. by working on mtr uh, posters mm-hmm. there is no way you're going to win an award all yeah. right because yeah. its indian mass is different from first world educated mass audience absolutely so so if you want to play that game that is completely zero judgment that's your call and if you play that game and if you ace it and you win it then then great stuff like because that that's what you want and that's what you achieved mm. and in a way you contributed in some way to advertising because you are pushing your craft and some guy is getting or getting inspired by the craft and by the creative thought behind it may mm. not be inspired by the advertising uh, prowess of that uh, particular piece of work right but it still yeah. will inspire people to do better work mm. so um so i don't hold any grudges against people who just want to do award work i know i i know few of them and uh, but i mean there is there is a shelf life to that right like you can do it till when you are in your uh, when till when you are probably acd is when you can do it but after that you have to deliver on right. real work because <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no like can is not paying you a retainer your uh, mnc client is but so but i have a perspective on that uh, revia so yeah. for example for uh, creative agencies right uh, especially when they want to differentiate themselves right a can definitely is something uh, because you are in the services game there is uh, no way that you can really show okay how much you have delivered and uh, in terms of value for the client right Uh, uh i mean apart from the numbers that are very indirectly related to it but uh, awards is one thing that kind of uh, gives you equity to charge that higher sort of a retainer uh to your uh, pitch works that that you'll be doing or your prospective clients so that's a, my perspective on on that so i don't know i mean i i i disagree with that because mm. nobody knows piyush pandey's awards Like, mm. do you even know what he is one i don't know and i don't care because mm. look at the body of work like look at fevicol mm. like i think just on the back of fevicol he might have got 50% of obvious new business that year right mm. so i i feel work speaks most for itself mm. and awards speak for the creator like it speaks for the creator who is I mean, it's not even glory at the end of it because it's five thousand people in the world who's clapping at your work. True. Um, but it is pushing craft. For me, I think I think that is the greatest contribution right. of awards is right. it is pushing craft. Mm. And if there is nobody who's pushing craft, uh, then you will just uh, you know be at the same level throughout. Mm. So I think it's a mixture of. wanting to push the craft and wanting to do mass work somewhere in the middle there is magic and uh, without either of them that magic will not happen i mean that's what i feel
No, uh, I mean, I think, so, I, think uh, I think it makes sense because. But I, I mean, I can, I can, I can tell you this hmm. that uh, an agency can survive, win businesses, make a lot of money by just doing client work. But an agency can't survive, win businesses, make money by just doing award work. That's true. Like I uh, agree. Like yeah. Lone Netas, I think, is the biggest example, right? I don't know now if they enter awards, but I, I, I don't think they do. And, mm. Yeah, in 2008 and 2015 or as that, they didn't enter any award. Mm. And I know in the year 2015, they won 100 new businesses, which was, I think, a record wow. that year, mm. where in no other agency had achieved 100 new businesses of what they added. Mm. Uh, so without doing a single piece of award work.